All right, what's up guys? So we're gonna try to verify the timing on the truck today and uh, it's raining outside. It's supposed to be a track day later today. It opens up at like four, so maybe it'll dry up. If not, they'll probably cancel it. But either way, I'm gonna verify timing, try to get it uh, going. A little bit of a frustrating morning for me so far. Went outside with the wife to go look at the front yard because she's doing some planting and stuff and saw something special. So here's the 350Z. This thing caught my eye right away. Look at this. Nice big old scratch right there. That's pretty cool. Going around to the other side. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Nice big old scratch here. All the way along the door. There's a big one there. And then up into the front here. Gotta love the scooters. So that put me in a little bit of a different mood this morning, uh, but let's get started on this timing verification. So one of the things, and Sloppy Mechanics, Matt Happel has a video on this actually. One of the things I'm gonna do first, and this was a learning that he had, was disabling the rockers. So I'm just gonna disable the rockers, basically just loosen them up so it doesn't open the intake and exhaust valves. So the, what I'm gonna be doing here is sticking something in the spark plug hole and rotating the crank and then marking the balancer. So I don't have the actual tool, so I'm gonna improvise a little bit and I'm gonna use a socket with an extension that is basically the same size as the spark plug hole. And I'm gonna be able to put this thing in there and then it should go in far enough and it'll actually catch on the tape. So it won't fall in and it'll hold it in position and that should be enough just to catch the piston on the way up. First thing I'm going to do is find the compression stroke. So I'm going to rotate the crank over. I could do it by watching the intake and exhaust valves, but what I usually like to do is just put a little rag in the spark plug hole and turn this over because when it gets to the compression stroke and it starts to come up, it should pop that rag right out of there. And then you know that the piston's up, coming up on compression stroke. So you can see it actually pushing on the intake valve now. That, so that should, it's opening the valve right now, so when that starts to close it, it should come around to the compression side. See, now it just popped that rag out. So now the piston is coming up on the compression stroke. So now what I'm going to do is get my little doohickey and I'm going to jam this in the hole and then I'm going to be very careful with how I'm bringing the crank up or bringing the piston up or rotating the crank. So I'm going to try to watch for a little bit of movement on that thing. Probably get this out of the way. I can actually see it. So I should be able to see, maybe see this thing wiggle a little bit when the piston hits it. And then it'll eventually get to a stopping point. And then I'll have to mark the balancer. And fumble around like an idiot no, trying to do this. Alright, so that other one didn't work, so I'm just going to use a 3 8 extension with some tape around it so it doesn't go in too far. And drop this in. And now we'll turn and see if we can get it to stop. Before it didn't go in far enough. I was pretty much right there already. See how it's coming out now? There, now it's, now it's tight. It's caught on there, so now I'm gonna mark the balancer. All right, so taking a look underneath, I just cut a piece of uh, sheet metal and made a little pointer. And that's my mark that I'm gonna be using. So that's the first mark. I'm going to turn it the other direction until it stops again, make the second mark, and then we'll divide it. Alright, so I'm going to try to do my best to show you this. But I marked the balancer. There's one mark. And then the other mark is up over on this side there on the balancer. So what I did was I laid this tape over, and then I marked the mark on the tape where the balancer marks are, 
and then I can remove the tape and that's what I did. I removed the tape, laid it down, used the tape measure and then actually measured it accurately to find the center and it ended up being about four and an eighth of an inch to center from the mark. So now I marked the line here, marked zero on the tape. Then what I'm gonna do is take that zero mark and just mark that on the balancer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all the way across the balancer though this time where the other marks I only did like a little a little halfy just on the front half but just to avoid any confusion on which marks they are I'm gonna go halfway or I'm gonna go all the way across here so that'll be my my fantastic mark so now what I'm gonna have to do is set the timing tables to zero degrees. I don't have a timing light that you can actually adjust for it, so that kind of sucks. So I'm gonna try to set the tables all to zero for timing and see if it starts and runs. If it runs, then we'll be able to throw the timing light on it and be good. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys this. I'll try to show you in one clip. I'm gonna start the scanner just to verify that it's settling at zero degrees. And watch the spark there. Stop this scan. You can still see it was stayed at zero degrees the whole time, uh, and you can see in the video that the little metal marker that I had was like, pretty much dead nuts, lined up right with the line that I made. So that's good. So that's pretty much it, I guess, for this one. Uh, everything seems to be fine. Timing looks good. Very uneventful, I guess. Checked it. It's good. Don't really need to do anything else after that. So. Now I'm a little more confident with it that it's doing what I am telling it to do and it doesn't have like an extra 10 degrees of timing in it and everything looks fine.